If you would open in the scriptures to Romans, the third chapter, we begin a, a series just, uh, was it last week? Maybe. Other things have happened since then. But recently. <laughs> and, and this is our text here in Romans 3. And the title of it is Real Faith. Real Faith. In Romans the third chapter and the third verse, it says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Now these are questions. Questions should have answers. What if some did not believe? What's the answer to that? What if, what if some did not believe? Well, not everyone's going to believe. That's right. uh, part of the Great Commission mentioned in Mark 16, uh, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be damned or condemned. Well, what does that let you know? Some are going to believe and respond to it. Some are not. The Bible said in the book of Acts where on a day Paul called a bunch of people to where he was and he preached from uh, morning till afternoon, basically all day. From the law, the prophets, he covered some ground. <laughs> you think I go along sometimes. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the scripture said when he finished said and some believed and some believed not do you think if Paul had done a better job been more thorough been more anointed that everybody he'd have got 100% uh -uh. in Jesus own ministry did everybody believe him no so some are going to believe and some are not going to believe, no matter how right the word is, how anointed it is, how well it is delivered. Some are going to believe, some are not. What if some did not believe? We should not be shocked. We should be aware that not everybody's going to believe. But if they don't, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? The, the word effect, without, without effect, we could also say useless. Will it make the faith of God useless? Or one, one way it's translated is to cease. Will it make the faith of God to cease? The one reason I mention that is because there are a bunch of people, sadly not just a handful, but a, a bunch of people that 20 years ago, uh, even 10 years ago, preached faith, talked about it quite a bit, endeavored to live by faith, but have become discouraged about the subject of faith and have talked about it less and less and have moved to other emphasis. And some people would imply that, well, you know, there are different moves and that there was a faith move from X to X, but that move has waned, <coughs> ceased, and God's doing something else. Well, God doesn't change. No, he, doesn't. he doesn't change. Now, he does emphasize different things at different times because the church changed and got away from it. And just like your body can be deficient in certain things, and you need some extra of it to get you back balanced. Yes. But that doesn't mean that that's the only thing you're supposed to talk about. Yes. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God if, without effect? The next verse says, God forbid. Uh, no way. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. 
the complete English says, it is true that some did not believe the message. But does that mean that God cannot be trusted just because they did not have faith? Does it mean that because they didn't have faith and it didn't work out, that faith is not real and right and God can't be trusted? Why would you even need to say this? The Weiss translation says, uh, instead of saying God forbid, says, let no one ever think such a thing. Instead of saying God, God forbid, let no one ever think such a thing. What? That the faith of God doesn't work. <clears throat> Felt a sneeze coming on. <clears throat> let no one ever think such a thing. Let no one ever think what? That the faith of God has ceased or is useless or doesn't work. Look with me in Timothy then, 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1 and 4. It says, uh, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. Edifying means building up. The scripture also talks about being nourished up in the words of faith. Everything we do is supposed to be in faith. Every message we preach is supposed to be in faith. I didn't say about faith. I said in faith. Everything we do, every prayer we pray, every offering we give, everything we do, if it's not done in faith, it's not pleasing to God. It's impossible to please Him, right? Without it. Verse 5, now the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Faith unfeigned. Now that's a King James word. What does that mean? Well, feign means to pretend or to be false. Unfeigned would mean not pretend. Faith that's not pretend. The, uh, the Weiss translation says, a faith that which is not assumed... Everybody say assumed. assumed. Not assumed, but real. So right away we know there's, there's a, a faith that is real, and there is that which is called faith that's not real. There is a fake faith. Yes. Amen. Yes, there is. Yes. There's, a fa there's fake faith. Yes. Yes. I think many are not aware of that. There is faith that is real, and there is that which is called faith, and to the unenlightened, it looks like faith, it sounds like faith to them, but it's not, and it doesn't work, and you don't get results. And then when people see that, they think, well, see there, now that's not right. That doesn't work, and that didn't work, so people are going to get away from that. And folks are right. What some people have called faith, it didn't work. Because right. it's not faith. That's right. <laughs> but what if some didn't believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? No. God forbid. No way. The faith of God is one of the greatest things you could ever talk about. And it works. Every time. Every time. But we need to identify this phony stuff and make sure we're not involved in any of that, ignorantly or otherwise. He said, uh, the message says, not a counterfeit faith. The BBE says, true faith. The, today's English version says, a genuine faith. The easy to read says, whose faith in God is real. 
That's where we got the title from. Real faith. So you got fake faith and you got real faith. You interested in this? Pray a prayer with me then. Say it out loud. Father God, enlighten us. Teach us. Give us understanding to discern and to distinguish between what is fake faith And what is real faith? We ask for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Were you serious? Did you release faith? Then you will see. You're going to know. More than you have before. That's exciting. That's exciting because you'll find out why some things didn't work. And once you got that, you know what to do so it does work. That's exciting. That's exciting. <laughs> now, one of the things that we, uh, we got into, well, what we did get into last time, <coughs> was a first type of fake faith. And we called it imitation faith. There's more than one kind of fake faith. And the first type we mentioned, and if you weren't here, you can go back and get a... a CD or of, of the message or your easiest thing is go online, download it. It won't cost you anything either way. But we talked in some detail about imitation faith and what that is, is imitating the faith of somebody else. Ooh, yes. <clears throat> and we saw the seven sons of Sceva who endeavored to cast out a spirit and they had seen Paul do it. And so they endeavored to mimic what they saw him do. And they said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus. You know the one Paul preaches about. (laughs) And probably no doubt they tried to mimic Paul's stance and his tone and what he did. And if you didn't know any better, it would sound like genuine faith, genuine attempt to exercise authority But the Spirit spoke up and said, Jesus I know. Paul I know about. But you, who are you? And jumped on them and beat the pudding out of them. And they ran out, you know, injured and naked. Well, you'd look at that and say, that doesn't work. If you didn't know better, you'd say, no, that that." You know, casting out and that exercising authority and that faith, that doesn't work. Look at that. Don't try that. And that didn't work because that's not real faith. That's imitating what you heard somebody else do. But Paul had heard from the Lord and did what he did. They hadn't heard from the Lord. Come on, can you see the difference? So they're imitating somebody else's faith. Friend, you can't get by on mama's faith or daddy's faith or pastor's faith. Come on, are y'all with me? You need to hear from him for yourself. You must hear from him for yourself in order to have real faith. And just because it's real to them doesn't mean it's real to you. The more I learn about faith, I I don't agree with people like I used to. Folks will say, believe with me for this. Well, you know, if I hadn't heard from the Lord about that, I can't have faith for that. And do I know if you heard from the Lord or not? Unless I have some kind of a witness well, God can do anything. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I can believe anything. Somebody tell me how faith comes. Come on, help me out here. Put it up on the screen. Romans 10, 17. How does faith come? There's a lot of ways people try to get it to come. People beg for faith. They pray for faith. Oh, God, give me faith. Please give me faith. The Bible doesn't say faith comes by praying. Faith in God comes from hearing what he told you. If you're going to believe him to do a thing in your life, you need to hear from him. 
that he's going to do that thing in your life or has already done it, whatever the case may be, but it'll be through his word and by his spirit, but it'll be quickened to you. It'll be made real to you that he's speaking this to you at this time about this situation. And once, you, once that's real to you and you hear that, faith will be there. Your faith will rise up. Faith comes as a result of hearing from him. So somebody comes and says, you know, I'm, I'm believing for this and I'm believing for that. Agree with me. Don't just say okay. Check your heart. Do you really have confidence? Have you heard from the Lord? And don't be too proud to say, well, I, I don't know that I'm there on that. I don't know that that's real to me. You know, people play games. And they say and act things that sound and look like faith to other people, but it's, it's not there. It's not real. When it comes to believing, you, know, you see the projects that we do as, as leaders of these churches and ministry. You know, that, like this plane project that we're finishing. When we begin that project, it was twice what we wound up with. It was twice the amount. And that amount was half the price of a new one. But as we got into it, you know, light's progressive. The further you go, the more light you get. We had a witness about cutting it in half again. So this project is a quarter of the price of a new plane, and we're as happy as can be about it. We're not, we're not just in the airplane business. It's just a tool to get ministry done and instead of that believing for all that other money, we believe that in other places of the ministry. You see what I'm saying? And that's, now if, if he told us believe for the new, that's what we do. But if I try to do that, he didn't tell me. You're going to struggle. It's going to go on and on and on. It's going to run out of steam. Everybody's going to lose interest. You see what I'm saying? How can you know what to do and how much to do? You know, you believed for a million on this. Why didn't you just go ahead and believe for five or ten? You believe in for a house. Why don't you just go ahead and believe for a 20-room mansion? <laughs> well, I don't want all that. Well, well, whatever it is. I need a car. Why not just believe for a Rolls Royce? I don't want one. Well... I want a pickup. Why not believe for the $100,000 pickup? The best one they make. Hmm? Mr. Well, I, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Well, it don't work by maybe. No, it doesn't. It's it, something's got to happen in you that that gets real to you. Right. Elsewise, you're playing games even though you're making confessions. That's right. And you prayed prayers. Right. What's real to you? Here's what I've come to do as a practice. If there's something we, we, uh, we need and want to do, ministry works the same thing personally. I look at the top. I go straight to the top. <laughs> Is everybody listening? I look at the top. And that's what we did on that plane project. I looked right at the top. And I had to hold on to something. <laughs> I thought, whoo! <laughs> Can God do that? Yes. Easy, 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 easy. But we don't receive based on what God can do. We receive according to our faith. So look at the top and then begin to check inside and see where's my faith at? Where's my faith at? Well, see, we came to the conclusion, our faith's not there right now. And that doesn't mean it could never be there. But it's not there right now. Could God do it? Easy. Am I confident to believe for that? No. Not today. It's kind of like lifting weights. Right? There was a time years ago I could press pretty good weight. But I better not slide under it today. <laughs> 
I'm just not there. Right? Unless I got three or four good spotters around, you know. I mean, <laughs> even know what I'm talking about, you, you can imagine, you can say, well, I used to be there. It ain't the same as being there today. I want to be there. That's not the same as being there. I could be there. Yeah, but you ain't today. <laughs> You're not there today. And today's what we're talking about. What are we going to believe today? So you look, at, you look at the top. Go to the top. Look at that. That also helps you to see. I mean, right now, the, the, the plane that we're using, it'll do everything the brand new one will do. And yet it's quarter of the price. And uh, it helps you to appreciate what God did for you. By seeing the scope of the thing. Anybody with me on this? And, and I'm happy that it didn't cost all that. I'm, I'm happy to focus on other areas. and Get that done and focus on other things. And, um, but you got to be honest with yourself about, uh, you know, are we going to believe for that? And I thought, hmm, hmm, hmm. And over the course of months, I, I brought it down, you know, and I cut it in half. And I thought, okay, okay. And then after a while, I thought, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and I brought it down in half again. And that was the spot. That was the spot. Witness. Come on, are y'all with me? And that's not just in finances and money. I know some years ago at healing school, Brother Hagin's ministry, we had people that were coming in continuously and had physical problems. Some of them, you know, uh, pronounced terminal and incurable. And... Uh, the one guy, he was there, and then he was, uh, I noticed he wasn't there and found out he's in the hospital. And he was in such terrible pain that uh, nobody could talk to him. I mean, they, they, they got him full of uh, pain meds, and, and he just, uh, and he's getting worse every day is the, is the problem. And you can't do that for very long. They said, you know, he won't make it much longer. He'd get, he's worse uh, yesterday than he was the day before. He's worse today than he was then. So I went, and uh, he wanted to talk to me, but he's barely conscious. He, uh, you know, uh, I, I could see there's no need in talking too much about scriptures. And I mean, I could read scriptures to him. They could affect his spirit, but as far as him consciously hooking with me, he, he's so distracted. So I'm, I'm searching my heart. We know what God's best is. Yes. We know what God can do, yes. Right? We can pray a prayer. We can believe we receive. He can jump out of bed, run around the bed, put on his clothes, go to the house. Right? Be done with it. God can do that. Jesus bought and paid for it. It's available to anybody. But we don't receive according to what God can do. We receive according to our faith. So it's not, it's not my body that's racked with pain. It's his body. It's not just my faith either. I got a, he and I got a hook. I got a hook with him. Where's he at? And so as I'm talking and looking, I'm, you know, we look at the top. Then we start trying to see where our faith is. Where's our faith? And that's not giving up because even though I might start here, that's better than not having any faith. It's better to start somewhere because now what can I do? I can go up. Come on, can you see this? I can come up, I can keep coming up till I can get to God's highest and best. But if I pretend I'm there when I'm not, I get nowhere. Nothing happens. And so uh, it came up in my spirit because they're saying he doesn't have time. I mean, he may be dead tomorrow. He may be dead the next day after that. He has no time. He's getting worse every day. They, uh, his family said it. Others said it. He said it. This is in their mind, getting worse every day. And I know it's from the Holy Spirit, came right up in my heart and mind. So if he doesn't get worse tomorrow and he stops getting worse, he has plenty of time. Yes. <laughs> he has time. I thought, yeah, if he just stops getting worse, he's got time. He's got time. And so I said, brother, I said, do you believe that you and I could, could ask the Lord and believe in faith and that tomorrow you would not be any worse? 
Now that don't sound like much. But it is when you've been sliding downhill hard every day. It's miraculous. And, he, and when I said it, I saw a light in his eyes. He looked at me. And I saw, he, he can believe this. We can hook up on this. He said, yes, Brother Keith. So I grabbed his hand. We prayed. And uh, we, just, we just thanked God. A little short prayer. Lord, we believe we receive whatever it takes in his body and in his life so that he's no worse tomorrow. That this doesn't get any worse. We ask for it. We believe we receive it. Came back tomorrow. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? He's no better. But he's no worse. Is that a victory? That's a hallelujah shouting victory. That's a victory. When you were sliding and might be dead tomorrow. That's a victory. But folk, people focus sometimes on the, the whole thing, the big thing, and they're not there. And so they're believing nothing. It's not all or nothing. It's, you know, check with the Lord. He'll show you where you are. He'll show you what you can put your faith on. So uh, uh, we, we rejoiced. He said, Brother Keith, I'm, I'm, I'm no worse. I thought, praise God. We praised God. We thanked God. I said, uh, what do you think? Believe we could step up a little bit? He said, I do. I said, let's believe that you're at least some better. At least a little better. He said, I believe it. Well, we, we see what the Lord did that day. What do you think? Next day? Not a lot, but some. This is a miracle. When you might have been dead yesterday, and not only did you not get worse, you got better. You got it moving in the right direction here. Come on, can you see that? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. And so uh, I... I, I wasn't able to go see him for the next several days. And then after that, I, uh, I, it wasn't that many days, the rest of the week. And so then I checked the next day. I, I actually came and, and, and I said, how about him to the nurse's station? And they said, he's gone. He went home. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Supposed to have been dead last week. Hallelujah. 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 But as, as long as, as I was looking, trying, you know, we're going to believe God and receive everything and jump out of bed, he wasn't there. I wasn't there with him. We weren't there. But the Holy Spirit helped us to see where we were. No worse. I just, I just smiled from ear to ear when that came up in my spirit. I thought, that's it. That will work. That will work. That's it. <clears throat> Go with me, please. To the book of Numbers. <clears throat> Numbers 14 and also Deuteronomy 1, first chapter. We're going to look at two places, two verses. Then I'm going to back up and give you more uh, context. You got time? Yes, sir. Yep. The Lord's answering that prayer. Right? Yes, we're going to be able to identify the phony stuff, the fake stuff, and we're going to be established in the real. In uh, Numbers 14, <coughs> verse 40, Numbers 14, 40, the Israelites that God had just brought out of uh, Egyptian bondage, they rose up early in the morning, Numbers 14, 40. And they got them up to the top of the mountain and they said, Lo, we're here and we'll go up to the place which the Lord has promised. For we have sinned. Does that sound good? No. Well, you know the story. Just look at the phrase. Does that sound good if you, just, if you didn't know anything about the rest of the... We're here. 
We're going to go up to the place the Lord told us to and promised. And we're repenting because we've missed it. Does that sound good? You know it sounds good. Hold your place there. Go to Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy 1, verse 41. And just hold these two places. We'll go back and forth. Deuteronomy 1, 41. Then you answered and you said to me, the people said to Moses, we've sinned against the Lord. Is that good? If you've missed it and sinned against the Lord, is that good? That you are repenting? I mean, that's great. We've sinned against the Lord. We'll go up and fight. He, told, he had told them to go up and possess the land. We'll go up and we'll fight according to all the Lord our God commanded us. Is that good? Does that sound good? He told you to go up. They said, we're going to go. And every man girded on his weapons of war and you were ready to go up the hill. Let me stop right here. Both of these phrases, which is describing the same situation, sound like repentance and a right heart. And it sounds like faith and is actually rebellion. Is actually rebellion. There is that which sounds like faith and is actually disobedience and rebellion. The devil is, is so crafty. He's so subtle. He's not obvious. And he, he's not a creator of anything good. But he is a perverter of any, everything good that he can distort and pervert. And faith, I, I saw this last night as I was waiting on the Lord about this. The devil and all those under him are afraid of faith. That's why they fight it so hard. They are afraid of faith because faith is the force that overcomes the whole world. They're, that's them. They're afraid of it. So you can be sure they're going to do everything they can to confuse people about faith. And, and, and he's found that one of the best things to do to interrupt and hinder something is to make an imitation of it. Make a phony version of it and get people involved in that. And then they're going to, it's not going to work. They're going to get discouraged. And he actually get people speaking against faith. As long as you stay away from it, they're happy. But not us. No, no, not, not us. No. We put faith on the front of the building. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It's for, forefront. They are saying, we've, we've sinned. We missed it. And we're going to believe what God told us to do. And we're going to go do it. And let's go do it. Sounds good. It is rebellion yeah. and disobedience. We get into the second type of fake faith. I'll call it presumptuous faith. The first one we mentioned was imitation faith. Imitating somebody else's faith. This is presumptuous faith. <clears throat> now, look with me in Numbers. Let's, let's back up and get some context. Now, the reason I did it that way <clears throat> is because that's the way we often get snapshots of people's lives. Is everybody awake? You'll hear people say something, and it sounds good. It sounds right, but you don't know the whole story. You don't know what else the Lord's already told them. In uh, Numbers 14 <clears throat> and 25, what had happened, if you back up to the 13th and 14th chapter, we won't do it right now, but he had sent the, the, the men in to spy out the land, and they came back and brought and said, it's a good land that flows with milk and honey, but there are giants there, we can't take it, no way, no how. Everybody except Joshua and Caleb said, 
we can't do it. And, and they even slandered the good land that the Lord picked. They said, it's, it's not the land that, that flows with milk and honey. It's the land that will eat you alive. And it insulted God. And uh, so after they absolutely refused, he said, okay, verse 25, you don't want to go? Tomorrow, go to the wilderness. And you're going to stay there. <clears throat> and uh, verse 39, when Moses told them how that they're going to wander in the wilderness for the 40 years, the people mourned greatly. Verse 40, and they rose up early in the morning and got them to the top of the mountain and said, Lo, we be here. We're going to go up to the place which the Lord promised because we've sinned. Yeah, but he just got through telling you something else. One thing that's, that's a revelation to me actually about, uh, oh, six, seven years ago especially, uh, when we were, before we started the church in Sarasota, and we were praying, we knew we were supposed to start another church, but we didn't know where. And uh, uh, had thought it might be at, at one place in the country, completely different place than, than the s South and Florida. And, and yet, uh, at, at one point the Lord said, no, leave that alone and, and look here. And that bothered me because I thought, well, Lord, you, you don't change. Did I miss it? Because I was thinking you said something about here, and now you're saying, leave that alone and look here? Surely I missed it, because you don't change. And he, he said, yes. I'm talking about how he speaks to you. Not, not a voice, but inside me. He, he reminded me, th this weren't words, but just thoughts. He reminded me of how he told Moses, he said, uh, when the people you know, refused to believe him. He said, get back out of the way and they'll be destroyed. I'll make of you a greater nation. Isn't he the one that picked them? And now he's saying he's going to do it a different way through other people. And I saw things are not written in stone because we truly have a free will. Yes, we do. And you never have to obey him. You can go your entire life. And even though he picked you to do a job, he called you, he anointed you to do it, that does not mean you will ever do it. But if you go long enough and won't do it, his plan is going to be done. He will use somebody else. He might use another town, another group, another church. Somebody that wants it. Hmm? And I, I, it was a revelation to me. I realized things are not set in stone. The Lord will tell you something. But if you won't do what he told you to do, there are times he'll tell you something else. He didn't change. You changed. <laughs> and when you changed, it changed your situation. And so now he's telling them, he said, he said, go into the promised land and take it. And for months, they didn't, they didn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they absolutely refused to. So he said, okay, you don't want to go. Turn around, go back into the wilderness. You're going to stay in there for 40 years. And they said, no, no, we're ready to go. <laughs> now this sounds humorous, but it's not. The Bible in Ephesians talks about the spirit of disobedience that's in the world influenced by the power of the air, the God of this world. Second Corinthians talks about it. And uh, it's this, uh, oh, what's the word? Opposite response. No matter what the Lord will say to people, they're going to say the opposite. These folks have been doing this all along. He said, go, and they said, no. He said, stay, they said, now we're going to go. He said about manna, you remember the manna situation that he did to, to demonstrate if they would believe him or not? It didn't demonstrate they believed in him. He said, go out and gather it up, don't save it. So what'd they do? 
They saved it. It bred worms and stunk. And then on the Sabbath day, he said, uh, um, the day before, he said, you'll gather twice as much. You can save it now, but don't go out on the Sabbath. So what'd they do? They went out on the Sabbath. Basically, whatever he said do, they're going to do the opposite. That is still with us and all around us today. This obstinacy, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of disobedience. As pastors, Phyllis and I have encountered it over and over again. No, don't do that. Don't think that's a good idea. Sometimes I've told people, just, just wait. Just wait a few months. But no. <laughs> they know. And, and you, you do some of these things. And what you need to do at that point now is you need to hear from God about what to do now. Because you can have missed a window of opportunity and you can have messed some things up. And now you need to hear from him. And so they said, no, we're not going to go. He kept trying to get them to go. Joshua and Caleb, did, their, did they do their best to get them to go? Yes. They said, come on, come on. We're here. We made it all the way here. And the Lord's with us. Yes. Their defense has departed from them. Yes. They're bred for us. We'd say, piece of cake. We can do this, boys. Yes. Come on. And the Bible said they thought about, they threatened to stone them. Right. Joshua and Caleb. Yes. That's how disobedient. That's how rebellious. So when they say, so the Lord said, okay, all right, you don't want to go? You don't want to go? Then go back into the wilderness. Now what did they say? No, we're going. We're going. <laughs> now, now why am I saying this? Because people have heard phrases like this and to them it sounds like faith and they don't realize it's actually blatant rebellion. Believe with me, for so-and-so is going to be my spouse. I'm believing that. And the Lord already told them, leave them alone. Hmm? Believe with me for this position. I'm believing for this position. And the Lord already told you, leave that alone. No, I'm doing something else. But no, they're going to use their faith to defy the instructions of the Lord. Now, how do you think that's going to come out? But if you don't know the whole story, you hear them quoting scriptures. You hear them making good confessions. Even talking about repenting when they missed it. Well, that sounds great. But you don't know the whole story. Sounds like faith. Looks like faith. But it's presumptuous faith which is not real faith. Verse, verse 40, they said, we're here and we're going. We're going to the place the Lord promised. You, you'll hear people, they'll refer to the Lord. They'll refer to scriptures. The Lord, the Lord. He promised and we've sinned and we're repenting and we're getting it right. No, you're not. He just told you to turn around and go in the wilderness. And Moses said, wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord? It shall not prosper. Go not up. Is he a man of God? Yes. Is the Lord speaking through him? Yes. What's the word of the Lord? Go Don't go up. So how does faith come? By hearing. By hearing. What's the word of the Lord to them today? So what can you have faith to do? Go Don't go up. You can have faith to not go up. How can you have faith to go when the Lord just got through saying, don't go? Don't go. <laughs> I'm going to go. Uh, you may have heard me tell the account of one of the first folks I ministered to when I was working in healing school and prayer call. And ladies had just been mugged. And, and uh, man, she was upset. And some yahoo had hit her in the head and grabbed her purse and and so and she was beside herself and crying and, and heaving. And finally, when she got where she could talk, I, she was most upset because it happened. Because she said, I quote the 91st Psalm all the time. And, and how could this happen? How could this happen? See, the devil's telling her, God lets you down. 
Faith doesn't work. Faith doesn't work. The devil will try to do his best to convince you faith doesn't work. That's that faith stuff doesn't work. That confession stuff, that believing stuff doesn't work. <clears throat> and I didn't know what to tell her. I didn't know where to begin. So I just checked inside. Lord, how can I help this lady? What can I do? And it came up to me. Ask her what she was doing. Why she was there. How this happened. So I backed up. And, and I asked her. And she stopped heaving and crying. She said, well, I said, did you, you needed to be there. Something was going on. It was a rough part of town. And she said, well, no, uh, actually I had a check about going. But I just confessed the 91st Psalm. And the Lord protects me. Well, you can't have faith to do something different from what the Lord told you to do. You've been confessing the 91st Psalm and it's manifesting. The Holy Spirit is warning you and checking you, don't go. It is working. Come on, can you see this? But if you ignore this and you're going to make confessions, no, I'm going to go. Does it sound like this? Yeah. I'm going to go. I, she, she probably wasn't meaning to be disobedient and rebellious, but she was. Yeah. If the Lord told you, dealt with you, don't go, and you go. Oh, friends, how many times this has happened yes, with how many Christians and believers, and you wind up at the wrong place at the wrong time, and the enemy had a set up for you. Yes, it is. And things happened that never should have happened. And then the first thing he'll do, first thing the devil will do, when the thing happens, that the bad thing, he'll say, where was God? Where was he? I mean, after all, you're going to church and tithing and giving and confessing. And where is he? Where was he when you needed him? Oh, he's evil. He's lying. He's deceiving. No, it's not why didn't God help you. It's why didn't we listen? <laughs> why do we try to believe something different from what he told us to do? Keep reading. He said, don't go up. The Lord's not among you, that you not be smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites, Canaanites are there before you. You'll fall by the sword because you're turned away from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord will not be with you. Do they have a word from the Lord? Yes. What is it? Don't go. don't go. If you go, you're going to be defeated. If you go, you're by yourself and on your own. The Lord's not with you. Don't go. Go. So this confession that sounded so good earlier is sounding worse and worse and worse. Oh, we're, we're going to go. We're going to do what the Lord told us to do. Uh, that was days ago. Yeah. Now you need to do what he told you today. Yes. Well, he doesn't change. He doesn't change. But he has to deal with a bunch of folks that do. Yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> His perfect will doesn't change. He doesn't change. Oh, but man. Uh, oh, it makes you feel for him. <laughs> this bunch down here is fickle and is unresponsive. The biggest thing is disobedient. Rebellious. <laughs> Recognize that spirit of defiance. Recognize it's devilish. Recognize it. When, you know, people of God and wisdom and grace is, is giving you instruction and something in your flesh wants to rise up and go, no. No. Nobody tells me what to do. No. No. <laughs> it starts young. Little ones. Huh? You can barely talk or walk. Look at you and go, no. It ain't cute. It can destroy their lives. Because if they'll do that with you, they'll do that with God. Right. It's not cute. They presume to go. Verse 44, they did what? They presumed to go up to the hilltop. That's why I call it presumptuous faith. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. They did this apart from their leadership. They did it in defiance of their leadership. They did it without the presence of God. Man, this is sure to be a disaster. 
Then the Amalekites came out and the Canaanites which dwelt in the hill and they smote them and discomfited them even unto Hormah. They had a devastating defeat. Look at Deuteronomy 1. Let's read their, this account of it as well. Deuteronomy 1 verse 40. What the Lord had said to them before this, he said for you, turn you, uh, excuse me, verse 8, verse 8 first. What he had told them originally, he said, I have set the land before you, go in and possess it, possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give to them and to their seed after them. So now at that point, what could they have faith to do? They, to go into the land and possess it. And so did they go? No, they said, we can't. They said, no way, no how. They, they were thinking about killing Joshua and Caleb, who were telling them to go. Verse 21, he had told them again, Behold, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of your fathers has said to you. Fear not, neither be discouraged. What can they have faith to do? They can have faith to go take this and go get this. But they cried and they felt sorry for themselves and they accused their leadership and said, You brought us out here to die in the wilderness. We're all going to die out here. Verse 26, notwithstanding, you would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Verse 32, in this thing you did not believe the Lord your God. And finally, in verse 40, he said to them, okay, you won't obey me. After all this time, you won't do what I tell you. Now turn you, take your journey into the wilderness by way of the Red Sea. Then you answered me and said to me, we've sinned against the Lord. We'll go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. <clears throat> I, I have experienced this personally. Yes. Numerous times dealing with folks. Do this. Do this. And they're not going to do it. And then things are all messed up. Do, do not, don't do that. Do this now. No, no, now I'm going to do this. Just defy it. If you say up, they're going to say down. If you say go, they're going to say no. If you say stay, now what do they want to do? They want to go. And they may not realize it, but the enemy is playing them. He brings the feelings and they just yield to them because of their pride and rebellion. You have to overcome your flesh to walk in the spirit and to walk by faith. You have to overcome. And one, one of the big indicators that somebody is submitted to God is that they are respectful of people. They are respectful of his word. They're respectful of his spirit. They're respectful of his ministers. They're respectful of their spiritual elders. Come on, are y'all listening to me? Respect. And when you see that disrespect, it shows lack of respect for God himself. Jesus said, if you receive me, you receive the one who sent me. That's if you right. receive the one I send, you receive me. That's right. right. And uh, you're ready to go up to the hill, he said. Verse 42, the Lord said to me. Man, this is, is this straight from God? The Lord said to me, say to them, go not up. Don't fight. I'm not among you. Lest you be smitten before your enemies. And so I spoke it to you. And what? You would not hear, but you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously up into the hill and they did it making a good confession. We're going to go. We're going to do what the Lord told us to do. We're going to take the land now. And the Amorites which dwelt in the mountain came out against you and they chased you as bees do and destroyed you in Seir even unto Hormah. And you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord wouldn't hearken to your voice or give ear to you. Why? Because they hadn't repented. They're just upset because they lost the battle. There's no heart change. Next thing he tells them to do, they, didn't do, they wouldn't do that either. More griping, more complaining. Somebody say, by the grace of God, not me. Not going to do that. <clears throat> The psalmist said, and I'm, I'm closing. The psalmist said, Psalm 19, 13, he said, 
keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let him not have dominion over me. Then I'll be upright and innocent from the great transgression. Do not believe everybody that says the Lord said. The Lord told me. Don't believe that. Just because somebody says those words does not mean he did. Sometimes he told them the opposite. And if you're trying to believe with them for something the Lord didn't even tell them, it's not going to turn out well. And then folks will say, well, it didn't work. Faith didn't work. If some did not believe, if some did presumptuous stuff, does that make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. The scripture said in Ezekiel, don't turn there, but in Ezekiel, the Lord said about folks, some, some individuals, he said, they say the Lord says, and the Lord has not sent them. And they made others to hope that they would confirm the word. They've seen a vain vision. They spoke a lying divination because they said, the Lord says it, albeit I have not spoken. Oh, friends, a lot of people saying, the Lord told me. The Lord told me I'm going to have this. And one of the things you can, that's a tip off is when people are talking about how great they're going to be. How big they're going to be. Uh-uh. They're seeking their own glory. No, trust the Word of God and the witness that you have inside. And if you don't have a witness about it, you're not being mean, and you're not even saying they couldn't believe for it, but you're saying, I, I don't have a witness about that. And the Lord dealt with me some years ago this phrase. He said, Keith, if you'll become more selective you'll become more effective. Don't try to believe for everything that everybody's believing for. Don't say everything that you hear somebody else saying. You be more selective. What you know you heard from me, and when you say that, it's going to come to pass. It hurts your faith when you pray and it didn't work. It hurts your faith when you make confessions and it didn't come to pass. But is that God's fault? Because you didn't wait on him and hear from him. Or because you sub- imagined something. Presumed something. Assumed something. Let me give you the definition of presume and assume. Because it's something you and I are staying away from. That was weak. I said you and I huh, are staying away from presuming and assuming. <coughs> what did the Lord say? Well, I I assume he meant this. Uh Uh-uh. We're not ready to hook. (laughs) Presumption means to be proud. It means to be insolent. It means to be swelled or lifted up. (laughs) In English, it means to do something you don't have a right to do. To presume, presumption means doing something you didn't get directions to do. You didn't get permission to do it. You didn't, you didn't get directions to do it. You're not supposed to just believe for anything that comes across our mind. Yeah, true. So true. We must hear from him. Faith comes by hearing from him. Ass- assume means to think something is true without knowing that it's true. Assume means to pretend to have or be something. Again, fake, phony. Now, I know some of this is not you know, as exciting as other things. You don't just hear it and want to run the aisle. But, friend, it can spare you from heartache. Amen. It can spare you from frustration, yes. from tears, yes. hmm? confusion. Yes. And you pray to prayer, we pray to prayer. The Lord heard that prayer. Yes. And we are getting purged yes. from junk. Hmm? Don't believe everything you hear. 
You believe everything he said, but you don't believe everything that everybody else says about what God told them. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Even if he did tell them, that don't mean he told you that. Right? Right? Yeah, that's getting back to imitation faith. Just because they had faith to do it doesn't mean you can, because you've got to hear from him for yourself. Yes. And presuming, oh, we're not going to presume. We're going to wait on him until we hear from him and know what the word to us for now is, and then we can stand on that. Hallelujah. We can stand on that. It's solid ground. Glory to God. It's the rock. That's not going to wash away. Hallelujah. And the faithful God will surely do what he said he would do. Can you trust God? Can you trust him? Can you trust him? Let God be true. Everybody else that says something different, a liar. We trust in him. Stand on your feet, everybody. Thank you, my father. Stand up if you would and just look to him. Close your eyes. Focus on him. Either affirm or reaffirm your faith today. Sit out loud. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son Jesus that you sent him to the cross and he paid the price for all my failures, all my sins. I believe you have raised him from the dead. He's alive right now. King of kings and Lord of lords. And I confess Jesus Lord of my life. Hallelujah. And Lord, I don't just say this by rote, but say this as well. I submit myself to the headship of Jesus. I submit myself to the Lordship of Jesus. To not just say what I want to say, try to believe what I want to believe but to hear from you and say that and believe that and do that for then it will be sure oh hallelujah 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 just lift your hands and thank the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's sing.